guys, Rachel Branke from The Law Talk. This is the go-to legal resource for photographers. Right now you're sitting on the general portrait page and probably wondering what the heck you're supposed to do with all these contracts or try to figure out what it is that you need. Never fear, I am here to help you. If you're one of those people that's thinking, I don't really need one of these, I'm not really sure, I want you to consider that you never have an issue till you have an issue. I work with photographers on the law firm side all the time who don't get contract protections in place and they end up spending 10 times what it would have been if they had just invested to begin with. As a lawyer and photographer myself, I understand what you guys need. So let's just start off with the legal client timeline. We're going to go in a chronological timeline of from when the client comes to you, consult to get booked, all the way through the very end when basically all your responsibilities have been fulfilled to them. I want you to keep taking into consideration that these are all considered contracts, right? These are all legal documents that you want to use in your business. There are two main ones though to kick off the relationship. This is the general portrait contract, which it's what it says. It is for general portraiture. This is the most general document that we have on the site. It can cover a variety of different types of genres or niches of photography, but it really is intended for just simple portraiture. It may not have the specifics that are needed for newborn birth or wedding. That's why we have those categories for you to check out. But this main portrait contract, which is the first really important document that you need to have, is the one between you and the client that gets them to become your client. This is so that you are legally bound to one another. It creates the relationship. It sets expectations about the responsibilities of you together from one to the other. It also sets the uh, stage for everything that's going to be happening. It lets the clients know the expectations and helps them feel comforted in knowing what the timeline is going to be and what they're gonna get out of this as well as what they need to do for you. It's also gonna provide a legal foundation so if you ever need to enforce a contract on a client or vice versa, then there is some direction and guidance to the legal methods in order to do that, like venue, jurisdiction, all the little legal miscellany that I want you to leave to me. So this, you guys should not ever shoot without a contract because it covers so much, it regulates so much of the relationship and helps to hopefully prevent issues happening in your business. The second main document contract that you need to have is a model release. What this does is it allows for the client to give you permission for use of the images in marketing. Now don't confuse this with the fact that you may have the copyright ownership to the images and so you're thinking, well, I don't need a model release typically. Well, you do need a model release if you're using the images, even if you own them, in the course of soliciting your business or marketing your business with the use of the client's face. There are publicity rights and claims that your clients may have for the use of their face in commercial marketing that you don't want to end up having to pay them for and you want to get permission. You don't ever want them to be able to come back and say, you can't use that image because you're using my publicity rights, you know, and you don't have permission. That is what the model release is for. You probably heard the myth, it's not really even so much a myth, but stick with me on this real quick. People will say, well, if you're just using the images in a portfolio, you don't need to have a model release. This day and age, because of the way that technology is, we don't really have just portfolios anymore. The social media platforms that we use are for seeking commercial gain. The websites that we have have investment information and they're marketing and they've got blog posts. We've got all sorts of these other elements that pull to what a simple portfolio would have been out of that not needing a model release into this realm of needing one because publicity rights are being used of your client. Another thing to consider too is if your model release is drafted properly, which we do this at the law talk, I know because I wrote it, but you can also have in the model release not only get the permission from the client for use of their face image in marketing, but also it, they can get you can get rid of any claims that they may have for compensation for use of that. You don't want to have to end up paying your client for you to be able to market with your own image, right? So that's what the model releases do. Now, my suggestion is to keep these two documents separate for multiple reasons. 
one, just best legal practice, each contract or document has its own specific purpose and end game, right? If there are so many purposes, you want to try to keep them separate. If one ever gets thrown out, the other will still end up being intact. But if they're all together, there's a good chance that the whole thing can be found invalid and we don't want that. But from more a practical standpoint, we want to make sure that our clients are reading and understanding it. And also we want to be able to waive a model release if any of our clients don't want their images used in marketing, specifically online. I'm of the camp that, and this is completely up to you guys with your business policies, but I am in the camp that you should honor the clients if they don't want to be used in marketing. And I'm referring to paid clients. I'm not talking about model calls. So just keep that in mind. But I would rather have one happy client, a lot of referrals from them, rather than never even getting a client at all, simply because I didn't want to waive the use of a model release. So Porsche contract and model release. These get the entire relationship started. These should be signed and done in order to even get them on your calendar. I also recommend payment. You guys can check out information about that over on the blog at thelawtalk.com, but just keep in mind that portrait contract and the model releases need to be signed before you do anything at all. So moving forward, we have this session, everything is gravy, you had such a wonderful time, and maybe now you're selling products, um, or maybe they were included in that initial contract. One of the top products that's being sold these days, and stick with me, even if you're an in-person salesperson that doesn't like selling digitals, stick with me because I've got a couple more documents that will specifically apply to you, but print releases are imperative to have if you are selling digital files to your clients. Release is kind of a misnomer. It's actually a personal use license that you are giving to or selling to your clients for the images from their session. This allows for you to retain all the copyright ownership of the images and you're licensing them a use in a personal type of relationship because this is a personal portrait session that you're doing for them to use on a personal level for personal activities, printing for in their house, putting on a sweatshirt for Great Aunt Sally in Seattle. But within that release, within that license, you can identify how many times it's reproduced, how you want it done, where you want them to print, all these sort of things, okay? So print release is super important to have. Now, one thing I want you to consider here is what's called a permission to sell to a third party. I do not include the standard in the general portrait contract, but it's not necessarily wrong if you don't. Many times people don't want their images sold to someone else. Now, when I'm referring to the permission to sell to a third party document, this is typically so that you can sell to family members or friends. Um, just keep that in mind. I have this separated out. You can include it in the general portrait contract. I just found through my practice that I would rather focus on getting the general contract in the model release up front because that was more important to get them booked. And then along the process, I could ask them if they want me to be able to sell to grandma and so forth and then get the permissions. It was too much of a hurdle putting it at the very beginning of the relationship. Again, that's just what I have found in my practice. You can change up however you want to do it, but that is why I have it separated out. All right, so we've gone through this whole relationship. We got created with the portrait contract, the model release. We have the print release in order for selling digital files. We got the permission to sell to a third party if we're doing that, but we also have to take into consideration what happens if our clients want to purchase more items than what was covered necessarily in the general portrait contract. The general portrait contract does mine at least the way that I drafted. It's in a chronological fashion, much how I'm talking about to you guys here, identifying all the steps, and it does identify my price list and all the inclusions there. But I want you to consider something here. Say that you sit down to do an in-person sales session or they decide to come to you and they want to beat, make a big order. Listen closely. I don't want you to jump to offering what I'm about to say, but keep it as an ace of sleep ace in the sleeve so that you can keep the relationship and preserve that with your clients. What am I talking about? Talk about offering of payment plans. Again, a lot of people don't purchase and have these documents ready to go because they think they're never going to use these with their clients, but it is good to have one in your purse, on your camera bag, on your online contract signing system, whatever it is ready to go. So then in case you do have this large order and you want to try to save the sell, you can get them into this installment contract, the payment plan. The reason that it ends up being a separate document, not only just the best legal practices, like I explained to you guys a little bit ago, but it is 
also because your initial contract didn't contemplate a payment plan for any additional purchases. You really couldn't because you didn't know what you're, they were going to buy. You didn't know what the order was going to be, how much each payment was going to be, when it was going to be due, any of those. So when you get to after the session, maybe you've delivered some products, and it's time for them to uh, make this big order. You want to have this in play. So I recommend having a payment plan contract ready to go. Um, credit card authorization forms. If you're doing that by hand, you're going to run it later. An invoice invoice form, and I also have payment plan scripts, so if you haven't offered them before, it makes it really comfortable for you guys to do that as well. So we've gone through all the timeline. Now let's deliver the products, okay? My recommendation here is to have what's called a product delivery agreement. You can call it whatever you will. Essentially, it is a document that your client is signing and saying, I have inspected all the, all the uh, products, the digital files, really important, especially if you're selling digital files or high dollar products, but I've inspected all of them and I accept them in the condition that they are. This is not necessarily an integral piece you need to have. It's kind of one of those good to have documents, but I still strongly recommend you have it, especially for digital files. So then there's, if you have that, if you ever have a client come back later and say that you didn't fulfill all your responsibilities or that the products were damaged, trying to save you, safeguard you and protect you. This isn't to beat up the client with, and I don't want you guys to beat up your clients with any of these documents or any contracts. They should be there to give you a backbone. They should be there to set expectations, but also to legally protect, and I'm here to look out for you. So that's why I recommend one of the very last documents that you have in play, and this is all just for the legal client timeline from beginning to end. Start with the general portrait contract, model release, print release, permission to sell to third party, payment plan bundle if you need to have payment plans, always good to have because you never know what's going to occur, and then finish off with the product delivery agreement. Now, I know this sounds like a lot. Start in priority order is essentially just also how I outlined it for you. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to su submit through the contact form. Myself or my team are more than happy to help you out, and we are thankful that you have found the go-to legal resource, and we hope to continue helping you protect your business.